Hello and welcome back to another video on this channel. In today's devlog I want to show you how I solve some problems, how I solve some bugs and because in the latest poll you mentioned that you really really are interested in my code even if it's a bit spaghetti code <laughs> but I think that's totally fine and in this devlog I try to cover it I try to take you with me in the code part and yeah that's the game plan for today. So let's don't waste any more time and dive right into it. Actually the first one isn't really a bug, it's a wrong implementation because I thought it's pretty funny to spawn the character every time on a random position. But I don't like it, I want to save that and you see I'm currently in the, I think it's the left corner of the whole grassland map and when I rejoin the same map um, then I'm in a other place i was like here somewhere and now i'm more left and we can try it again on the hell side of the game where's the player let's find him and yeah yeah <laughs> okay that's also not a really really good starting position i guess but it's totally fine because uh, of my implementation i think now he's got a better chance yes and now he spawns at a different place. I really, really think that we have to save our current position and really use that when it comes to spawning the player again, I guess. So currently we do not have any more information in the player manager as the player himself. And for that, I just want to create a new dictionary to save that. We can use a private dictionary, which is called player positions and we want to create a new dictionary for that. For the key we want to have the world side and of course for the value we want to have a vector 2 because the vector 2 will be the cell. So we have the world side type as a key and we got the vector 2 as integer as the value. So with that we can now create a new public function which is basically a getter um, where we can say okay this will return the value and we get the player position by world side which is nothing nothing hard because we just say okay player positions from the world side type and this is a parameter we want to get from our parameters. Oops, uh, in here it's just the vector 2 of course. So this is our getter function and of course we need a setter function. So for that we just create a new function which is called set player position by world side and the autocomplete already does a really really good job. But beforehand we want to check if we have the world side type within this player position dictionary. So we say okay if player position contains key we do that and otherwise we want to return null and we can easily do that within one single line to have the code a bit more clean. We say hey if this is true then we can use that and if not then we just want to return null. In this case we can easily use our current method to just pick a random one as a fallback. And here we do not miss the question mark. Nice. So now we are in our level manager and you see the spaghetti code really starts here. Why the hell is there a save data in here in this case? This absolutely should not be. This should be loaded at the start. But as I said, <laughs> these little surprises will appear a bit more often uh yeah but it's <laughs> totally fine as it works uh, for me so currently we are just saying okay if there is no unit then please pick a random one right here and we want to do it better now so let's just see if we got a position saved so we say we want to get the player position by the current world side and the current world side can we get by the selected world side and we want to get the data from there. So we want to get the world side data and in there we should have some kind of world side SO which is the scriptable object and in here is the world side type. So we can make it a bit cleaner by saying okay world side type and side type equals to this one and now we can just put side type in here. So what we're now getting is um, the vector to int as position of course from the player manager. And now we can check okay if the position is null we know 
that we have to generate a new position, which is basically the pick random one. Oh, we actually do want to use that. So we say, okay, world cell, and then we get the current cell by position with our position. And we also have to make sure that this is a vector two in now instead of a vector two. Then also this cast here isn't necessary anymore. And this is totally fine to refactor that in that way because I won't use that anywhere else except in this level manager. So now we can test that and we can select this grassland level and we see, okay, our little astronaut is right here. And if we go back and go again into this level mode, then we see, okay, our player remains at this position. Hooray, this is pretty awesome. Um, and let's see if it also works for the hell side. Let's see where is our astronaut. It's right here and we can now move him into the middle and now go back and then we select the grassland to just see okay our little astronaut remains at this position nice and now if we go back to the health side hopefully if we select this level yes <laughs> the astronaut is in the center of the map so our refactoring worked great another bug that i found was when we want to move our little astronaut and while he's moving switch the sides it is a very very weird behavior uh, let's see uh, i say okay go to this cell and now i'm switching to the hell side and you see okay this looks really 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 odd and then he's choosing his path to this way and now you see i cannot walk anymore because it's broken because it is not implemented to handle this so let's tackle this my idea of solving is to save the previous selected world site and if the previous selected world site is the exact same as the current selected world site then everything's fine i think then it's okay that the player moves all along but when it isn't we want to stop our moving coroutine and make sure that the position is correct on the new world site so for that i just save the previous select the world site right here and then we can easily check here if previous selected world site is not the same as the current selected world site then we say okay player unit dot i just call it reset walking we can rename it later if a better name comes to my mind and in this function we just want to say okay um we reset this walking state so we say walking state is false and of course we need our walking state right here of course this is just a new spaghetti code <laughs> but i want to make sure that this is working or well, let's call it do reset and we have this as false and if we say okay we want to reset this then the do reset is true i think this is a better solution for that specific use case and then we easily say okay if do reset then break and also right after that we want to make sure to escape the second while loop we say okay if do reset then break but before that we can set do reset to false and oh no we just do it in the end uh <laughs> so the do reset here and then right here we can say okay if do reset then do reset false and return oh i can return right here why though ah it's an enumerator okay ah yes we're in coroutine sorry my bad uh, this should be a yield break nice so with this we can now break out of this walking coroutine so let's try it out we are here and i want to walk right over there and when i'm going into the hell mode it's working of course uh but you already saw that the animation still is going on but this is a really small fix i do off cam uh yeah and that's it for this bug hooray and the last bug i want to cover in this video is a simple ui bug uh, if you see the progress manager right here the labels don't add up with all the items um and this is so simple because uh, every time i add a new ui area for each item i do not increase the size of the parent game object in this case um the one for the grassland so let's dive into our code and fix this really quick so we're here in the ui panel progress area and we just want to recalculate our position here uh, uh the size i mean <laughs> 
And in here, we want to get the current rack transform. And this is not a good advice to do so. I will do this off can later when I do some code cleanups that are not that interesting. Um, we do not want to get the component every time, but I think uh, for the sake of the video, it's uh, totally fine to have this right here. And we want to get the current height of our current rack transform, which we get by rack transform dot rack dot high and now we easily want to increase this current height by the new item that comes to our area so we want to have a new vector 2 and for the x we stay with the rec transform size delta x but now we have the current height plus uh, the height of the new game object we get right here, which is basically the game object and we want to get the rec transform also and get the high from that. So we have this little code right here and let's see if this worked. Yep, and as you can see, we have our area right here and it is not messed up. Of course, for the desert and stone land and stuff like that, there is no items but now all the other items have enough space to breathe hooray nice so that was the video for today this was a bit more technical on how i fix some bugs if you liked the video then please hit the like button and if you don't want to miss any updates on this project then please smash the subscribe button and we see us in the next video bye